Okay, uh, let's give you an idea of how Minicam works. Uh, when you open the interface, this is kind of what you see, but down here, this what is currently one and two would be empty just like these other plus signs. These are video sources. If I right click on one of these video sources, I can choose any camera that's currently connected to the computer. I can also choose uh, a desktop. In this case, I have five displays and I can choose any one of these desktops. There are some additional options that I haven't used yet, specific applications and so on. So it's quite capable. Uh, and this is the second video source I've chosen over here. I'm gonna transfer to that. Uh, this is actually monitor number four, which if I right click on that and choose desktop, uh, that's this display right here. It doesn't show it, but I know that's what it is. And that allows me during the course of recording a video to, and by the way, trans, transition is what that means. That's more of a slow fade where cut is in instant. So that's all that is. And I can add as many of these as I want. So if I'm recording, I can then uh, on the fly demonstrate material. So if I want to go to that one and then I start typing and removing and demonstrating and then at some point come back and start talking about what is. Now down on the bottom, uh, we have pause recording. So it looks like I, st <laughs> I started a recording automatically. Um, we need to just kill that one right now. In fact, uh, stop recording would be a better one. I have no idea why I've got 21 minutes worth of recordings. But anyway, I'll delete that later. Uh, right here is to start a recording, to take a screenshot. And this one is to start live streaming. If I click on live streaming, I've got my uh, various choices here. Uh, if I click on, I'm already logged into these at present. Uh, I can log out, choose login. And at that point, the first time you do this, um, it's going to ask you for your Facebook credentials and you'll log in and then you'll be all set. Um, beyond, uh, after that, as you can see in this case, it doesn't even ask you, it just, you're, you're connected, it's done. And uh, there you enter in your stream title, a description, and as soon as you click this button, you're live. It's pretty slick. Um, much better than the OBS method. Go back to uh, live streaming, look at Facebook, same principle, log in. Okay, in this particular time, I have not used Facebook, so I'm going to go ahead and log in with my account. And, hmm, I think I need to choose that one. Yep. Advanced. Okay, I know and trust. All right, we'll give them the okay. All right, and evidently there's something else I have. I have zero. Okay, so I'll figure out what I've got to do there. I've got to, I've got to enable live streaming, so I'll take care of that. That's uh, not related to this video. And if you use Twitch, I, I don't yet anyway, so we'll use that. Okay, <coughs> let's talk about some of these features on the right, including green screen, which I use quite a bit. Chroma key, which is selected here. You can then choose the background and uh, the color picker will allow you to pick the specific color you want. If you choose auto, it's gonna pick a green screen uh, by default. Uh, color picker, I would then, uh, presumably there's some kind of a reset here. Okay, so I can pick different areas. And by the way, I've noticed that's a progressive picker. So if you click it once and click it again and click it again, it tends to pick more and more of the green away. Um, but auto, uh, has done me well in the past. And so uh, I'll just leave that blur control. Advanced settings are good. You can see you've got spill suppression, which um, a lot causes the green to be a little bit more aggressive or less, less aggressive and uh, blur control. And the background is what you choose to display in place of the green screen. And uh, in this case, they are images. It doesn't do uh, videos but you come in here and you choose whatever background you want and it'll put that in place, which is what I've done here. That's what that Windows 7 is. So that's how that works. And you can turn chroma key off by just selecting that. Uh, now you'll notice when I turn chroma key off, it, the, the green that you're seeing is actually the green screen sitting behind me right now. 
And uh, there's a couple other options here. Lower thirds, the ability to display uh, something like this at the bottom of your video. Uh, it's kind of fat. I've got to figure there is a they, they make custom lower thirds online that that can can be a little bit smaller. Um, and those are really the main things that I personally use. And I'm not sure what favorites are. We'll get into that later. But that's how it works. That's how streaming works. That's how switching between cameras works. And uh, that's how chroma key works. So you're all set. And it looks like I haven't used this one here. It looks like I can lock in. Oh, what is that? Unlock up to 12 video presets. Oh, that's another upgrade option. Okay. We're done. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. I also want to show you where these videos are saved by default. If I click the settings icon in the top right corner, click on recordings by default, it puts them right there. You can change that by clicking on these three dots on the right hand side and direct that to save them wherever you want to. And I've, I've got most of that on its defaults. And on the video side, you can also choose the possible uh, resolutions. Now, I'm not sure which one I have chosen by default. It's available on the ManyCam window, okay, which is right here. And if I right-click on that, okay, I've got a, an option. If I just right-click up there and I choose resolution, here I can choose frames per second, resolution, and so on. And by the way, you can have chroma key on one and not on the other. So your settings can be unique to each individual screen. One last thing I do want to uh, talk about is the ability to switch between these two with keystroke commands. Uh, so I think it's alternate. Yeah, so in my case, alternate one and alternate two allow me using the keyboard, not the mouse. That way I can continue to look straight ahead while I'm pressing those keystrokes. And that is probably in here, yeah, under hotkeys you'll see this alternate plus and then a number is the transition between presets. That's very ambiguous and it took me a while to be sure that's what we were talking about. The presets are actually the various input sources. And then you really need to set this to global. Otherwise, this toggling of one and two only works while you're in Minicam and it doesn't work when you're looking at say, your, you, if you click off screen, so like right now I'm clicked on this other monitor and if global wasn't turned on, it wouldn't respond to this. But now because I have global turned on, it does. I've had situations where I've got the wrong login for Facebook or YouTube. I've got multiple accounts and maybe I wanted to use one of the other accounts. And the only way so far I've found that the quick way is just to clear history, clear all history for your browser and it'll reset and reprompt uh, at that point. Now, maybe there's probably a cookie in that browser related to ManyCam that can be deleted and, uh, and make that a little bit easier because I did not find any add-ons, extensions, or anything else like that for ManyCam. There, now I'm done.